Hi, I'm Annie Billings, president of Ellipscore Communications. I am so delighted that you've joined us here online. Again, let me sort of tell you uh, a little bit about me and my company. My company is Ellipscore Communications, and we are a broadcast operations and engineering resource company here in Fort Worth, Texas. Now, although we're based here in Fort Worth, Texas, we're still, we travel around the world. We provide training and support services to broadcast stations and vendors. The purpose for this program is, or this 10 minute segment, I don't wanna call it a program because it's a 10 minute segment, but the purpose for this is to educate our operators and engineering maintenance personnel in the television broadcast industry on new technology. Because the persons who are responsible for making sure that we have television each day are operators and maintenance people. And we also have those people who are in production, they play their role too. So what we want to do is to be able to provide to you from an educational standpoint, this is not sales, this is an educational standpoint of new technology that is being introduced into the television broadcast world. And so we're gonna start this session today with cloud-based operations. You know, so many times we hear the word cloud. Well, what is the cloud? You know, is it somewhere up in the sky? What is it? So today I'm gonna to take some time and I have three little sections that I want to cover in this 10 minute section. So number one, we're gonna talk about what is the cloud? We wanna make sure everybody understands what the cloud is. Number two, what are the benefits of moving my content or my services, my operation to this cloud? And number three, how does cloud-based computing, cloud-based operations, how does that affect you as a user, meaning the operator or the maintenance people or whoever responsible for maintaining these systems, how does that affect you in the television broadcast world? So let's get started so we can get through this in 10 minutes here. Okay, number one, the first thing I wanna do is let's talk about what the cloud is. So what is the cloud, okay? So, you know, we talk about it, we hear it all the time. Oh, it's in the cloud, it's in the cloud. Well, what is it? Where is the cloud? And so many people say, well, where is this cloud? I know it's, you know, data stored somewhere, but where is it? So let's take a look at this. What is the cloud? The cloud itself is actually a group or a section, or I don't wanna call it a section, but what it is, it is remote servers that are housed on the internet. And when I say they're housed on the internet, what that means is, is that these computers can be miles away from you. But now, when I'm still using the term computer, I wanna use the term servers. Because these servers have the capacity to, load, to store large amounts of data. So in the television broadcast world, not only is it going to store data, but it is also going to be able to store your content. And when I say content, I mean video files. So these servers are different locations throughout the United States. But I don't want you to just think this is just something that the United States is doing. These servers can be across in London, they can be in New Zealand, it all depends, and those are called zones. So therefore, what happens is you have different zones of where these servers are housed. And these servers are known to be data centers, okay? Now, before we, I show you what a data center looks like, again, what is the cloud, Annie? So the cloud is a group of remote servers that are housed in a data center that allow businesses to store their data and content, which we call the cloud. Because those data centers where the servers live are not on or in your location. Because most of the time right now in television, we have 
all of the servers that store our content, they are housed in the building in which we play our content from, from where we work, okay? So with the cloud, these are remote servers and they don't belong, they're not owned by the television station. They're owned by other companies. The companies that host these servers are services that you may use. Some of these companies you may know, like Amazon Web Services, AWS. You also have Microsoft Azure. You have Google Cloud Platform, and you have IBM. That's just to name a few. There are still other cloud-based hosting services that I don't have on my list here. But I tell you, this is new technology. Now, cloud computing has been around, really, it got a wide use starting in 2006. So it's not like something that's just starting. We in television broadcasting, we are moving to that, but it has been around for a very long time and you use it every day. If you have a Google email account, if you have any type of email account that's by any of the services, that information from your email, which is data is being stored in the cloud. It's being stored on a remote server that is owned by that company. In my case, like I use G Suite, so uh, Google Workspace. So every time I send an email out, that email is being stored onto Google's cloud, and that's Google servers. So when I'm able to, if I need to go pull my information back, see, I have an email I need to go and look for. If I didn't delete that email, I can now go and pull that email back because it, that data was stored on the server. So from a television broadcast standpoint, the content that we play to air, that means our video clips, that can be commercials, promos, PSAs, program content. Currently, most facilities have those servers within the building of where you're working in that location where you're working right now. Now, not all, because we do have some station groups that have their own data center, or they're using a hub and spoke. That's a different conversation for a different time, and we'll talk about that if you ask questions and come back to the next program. But for the most part, stations who still have on-prem, now on-prem means simply means on-premises. You have your content stored in a server or in multiple servers that are located in the rack room within that building. If you don't know what the rack room is, go and find a maintenance person and say, hey, where's all of our servers that's storing our content? And they'll tell you it's in the rack room. It's the engineering equipment room. It's where all of your equipment is housed in a television station. So you're playing that content back from those local servers. However, in the cloud, there is no local server there. Now you may have some client workstations which will allow you to connect to the cloud. Just as you do now, when you need to connect to those servers that are in your rack room, you have workstations. Those workstations can be a computer, a desktop computer, it can be a laptop, and in some cases it can be mobile devices. It all depends on what you're looking for and how you're going to be using it. But the thing is, is that you're playing that content back from some local server there in your building, or you're playing it back from a data center that is owned by your broadcast company. Okay. So that's the difference is content locally versus content that is being stored in the cloud. Okay. So the next slide here we want to talk about. Okay. What this is what these servers look like. I want to show you a couple of pictures here. So you may have servers um, in your building that may look sort of like this, but not quite, depending on what your facility does. If they are data, if they have their own data center, then yes, you might have that in your building or a building that is on your location there somewhere on the grounds. But this is what a server room looks like where all of these, what we call cloud-based servers are living. So it could look like that, or it could look like this. It's just rows and rows of servers. 
and on those servers is content that belong to different businesses. So Amazon, Google, IBM, they are all storing your metadata and content so that you can access that content when you need to. So that's what the cloud is. The cloud is nothing more than remote servers that are hosted over the internet that allow you as the operator to be able to access that information that is being stored there to be able to play your content back to air or to manage that content. Okay, the next question. What are the benefits of cloud computing? Now, there are several benefits to cloud computing. It all depends on how you plan to use it, okay? Cloud computing can simply be where, again, I am purchasing space to be able to put my applications and my content on a remote server. In order for you to access that remote server, it is simply going to be some type of web-based application that will allow you to access those servers to be able to retrieve or manage that content, okay? So the benefits of being able to have a um, cloud service is number one, it's secure. And that's what most people are afraid of. You know, I'm putting my stuff out there. You know, is it secure? Yes, because these data centers, not anyone can just walk into them. And in order for you to get into a data center, you have to have clearance and you have to have scheduled time to get in. So it's not like you can just say, well, okay, I have a problem with my computer. I'm going to go and restart that computer. No, it doesn't work that way. These are in the cloud. They're in those data centers, and you don't get into those data centers without approval. Next thing you want to talk about is the scalability. Now, when I say scalability, you may have right now, you may be broadcasting maybe six or seven channels because you have your main channel and then you have your sub channels. And so for every channel that you're running, you have to have a piece of equipment, which is called a video server, that will allow you to be able to play content back to air from that video server. Well, in this case, if you decide, okay, I no longer, I'm going to be running 12 channels. We're gonna cut it down and we're only gonna run 10 channels because two of these channels are gonna go away. And when I'm talking channels, I'm talking broadcast channels. They're gonna go away. Maybe you sold those channels off, or maybe you know someone else purchased them again, or maybe they are just gonna channels that are, you're no longer gonna broadcast because your contract is up to be able to provide those broadcast channels to your viewers. So if you decide you're no longer gonna use those channels, you're still stuck with that hardware. That hardware that is running those channels from your local facility, you are still stuck with that hardware. You bought it, you paid for it, and you own it now. Whereas if those channels were running in the cloud, you say, okay, we're no longer gonna run those channels. Then you just turn those channels off, they go dark, you no longer pay for it. So the cloud is a pay, by, pay as you need or pay for services as you stand them up, okay? So you don't necessarily say, well, okay, I'm still gonna be allocated the space over here. No, if you turn a channel off on the cloud, it's no longer a channel. But if you decide later on, you get a new channel that comes into the facility and say, okay, I need to actually uh, bring up another channel because we now own this channel and we're gonna be broadcasting that channel. Then what you have to do is you can go back to the cloud and bring and start another channel. So that's the flexibility and the scalability is that I don't own the hardware, but I can run as many channels as I need to, or I can stop running channels and I don't have to continue. I, don't, I didn't lose as much 
revenue by purchasing those physical servers to run those additional channels, okay? So that's the benefits, is being able to also have someone to manage this system for you, um, not having to have a full IT staff that you've hired. Those servers are being managed by the hosting company. So that's another thing that it will save you on having to hire people full time. Okay? So there are several different benefits to cloud computing. The next thing is how is cloud computing going to affect you as an end user? In a television station, cloud services is going to affect every single department in a television station eventually, okay? Because news is now doing remote production, sports is doing remote production, master control, you will be playing content back from the cloud, traffic, if you need to view a file that was actually recorded but the customer is saying, that maybe perhaps you're running the wrong commercial, well, guess what? You will be able to connect to the cloud also to be able to view that content. No longer will you have to go down to Master Control and say, hey, Master Control, can you show me this clip? You will be able to do that from your desk using a web browser to be able to view that content. The same thing applies to sales. Sales, if your customer is calling and saying, that, you know, I think you're running the wrong spot of ours or our spot got cut off or there's a problem with that spot, the sales department or whoever that salesperson will be able to access that particular commercial from the cloud and view it and verify to the customer whether you're running the wrong spot or whether there's a problem with that commercial. No longer will you have to go to master control or to traffic and say, we need to view this spot. So, from an operator standpoint, now we are able to have other people be able to do some of the tasks that we have been assigned to do, and that is uh, being able to pull up clips or go and find a clip to show it to someone from the programming department or the traffic department. And from a maintenance standpoint, maintenance, you, this is a big thing for you because you no longer have, when we go to cloud computing, those servers are no longer housed in your building. So you've got to be able to learn to manage the services that connect to that server. That's some of the biggest things that's going to affect your workflows is how we get content in, how long does it take to get that content to the cloud, and then can we manipulate that playlist at the drop of a dime, because sometimes we change things at the very last second. So those are some of the things that you have to take into consideration when it comes to you being able to understand what cloud computing is and how you're going to manage it within your station. And what you're managing is actually the content that lives on those remote servers. So with that said, I hope that I've been able to share some information with you here today. Now, this is our first session. We will continue to do sessions. Right now, we're scheduled to do a session weekly. However, we'll see how this session went today, and we may move to bi-weekly. But if you have questions, please leave them in the comment section, or let me, before I go, let's see if we have any comments that has come in. No, we haven't got any comments. But if you have comments, leave them in the comment section here on LinkedIn, YouTube, and we will respond to your questions. If you have a topic that you would like for us to cover, leave that also, and we will consider con uh, covering topics that you leave to let us know what you would like to know information on. Again, uh, I am glad that you all have joined today, and at any point that you have questions, remember, leave them in the comment section, and we look forward to seeing you on the next segment.